And if you're around heathens six days a week, somebody ought to help me here. You're around heathens who are hellish. Look like you would look forward to being in the house of God praising his holy name. Um, I, I want all of us to look forward and I like what all of our sun leaders, they're diverse in their gifts and their delivery. And I don't want you to lock yourself in because if you lock yourself in, you might end up locking yourself out. Uh, let's appreciate each other and, and let's, let's as long as we stay in scripture, are y'all with me? Um, and so let's appreciate that. I, I, I know I'm helping somebody with just these introductory remarks because um, uh, sadness is expected at a funeral. But I don't want to go to a funeral and be sad and then come to worship and be sad. Now y'all going to talk about me if I go to see Mary J. Bly at the concert. And I, I can imagine Per Crusoe was at a concert. Uh, uh, and, and some folk are coming to Mississippi in September. Uh, um, Anthony Hamilton and um, Johnny Gill. And if I slip and go to that, y'all going to talk about me. I know y'all are. Y'all talk about me even when I don't go there kind of stuff. So my point is, if, if I can't worship God and enjoy worshiping God, something's wrong with, with our theology. So I, I'm not coming here, and I don't want you to come here, as some young folks say, to get your praise on. That, you know, it ain't about getting your praise on. It's about worshiping God. And it's about enjoying worshiping God. Are y'all feeling me? You know, I, 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 I'm not, you know, I'm not archaic. I'm not a dinosaur. I, I try to keep up with what's going on in the brotherhood, in our world. But I don't want you to think that God wants us to serve him and not enjoy it. Are, are y'all with me? So, 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 so it's okay to say amen. And it's okay, brothers, to say amen. amen. I, I told you, a friend of mine in Colorado heard a tape of mine, and he, and, and he said, Mike, ain't you got some men in that church? All I hear is women saying amen. So, brothers, it's okay to say amen every now and then. Uh, and, and, and it's okay if you want to clap your hands, if you heard something and the song feel good to you, and Preacher hit an opening. You know, it's all right. We we, we ain't gonna call the police on you. Uh, so so I, I want to say that I appreciate what all of our brothers are bringing to uh, the worship service on Lord's Day. Now I, I want to talk to us about overcoming stress, depression, and anxiety. And, and this is a mini series. Uh, so I'm going to do something today, and I'm going to do something next Lord's Day, if it's the Lord's will. And I, I want to say I'm not here in a clinical uh, role. I, I have limited experience uh, working with a day treatment facility, uh, mental health, I, just limited. And I'm not here to uh, prescribe anything from a medical perspective or even from a professional perspective. I, I'm really going to try to stay with the Bible. Yes, but I do want to suggest that when we talk about depression, when we talk about anxiety disorders, and when we talk about stress, that some of that is, is caused or created by chemical imbalances. And, and when there are chemical imbalances, there, there, there is medication that people might have to take. 
I don't want you to say that the preacher told me to just put my trust in God and I don't have to take my medication. If you are on medication, keep taking your medication. Is everybody with me here? I, I want to say that 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 some of us who are not on medication may need to be on medication. Uh, but I don't want you to get so spiritual and so faithful that you don't take professional advice. Uh, I had a caseload. It was a very small caseload when I worked in that field. It was overwhelming to me because this was my first job out of college and I was just happy to have a job in my field, in my major, but I remember two individuals that were on my caseload. They were just, during the day, they were kind, gentle individuals. One guy, his name was, was Andre, I believe, and he was a big, heavy, African-American guy. And the other, one, another guy, I can't remember his name, but he was a Caucasian guy, and he was slim, um, and looked like a hippie. He looked like a hippie. So this is back in the 70s, late 70s. And I remember that when they took their medication, they were just as gentle as they could be. But if they did not take their medication, they would turn into a grizzly bear. And I remember one weekend, uh, they had some episodes and I got a call at home, and I got a call on Friday about Andre, and then I got a call on Saturday about this other guy, and I started thinking, there's something wrong with my counseling skills, because two of my caseloads are having some episodes, one after another. But, but, but push comes shove, what I found out is when, and, and both of them had some, some uh, addictions to alcohol, and some other problems, and, and, and both of them were on antabuse, and when they took the antabuse, of course they did not drink, but if they did not take the antabuse, they would drink, and then they would go out in public and they would have these, these episodes, and, and you know, we can pray for folk, and we can feel sorry for folk, but if you break the law, they're going to lock you up. And so, you know, I, I got a call. But I want to share some things with you, because... 5% of the world's population suffer from depression. That, that's 350 million people in this world. Um, 17 to 20% of Americans suffer from some form of depression. Women are more likely to be diagnosed depressed than men. 4% of women and 2%, 2.7% of men. Now I said diagnosed. That does not necessarily mean more women are depressed than men. It just means more women seek treatment than men. There may be a lot of depressed, stressed out, anxious men who never go to the doctor. Uh, but watch this. African Americans are more likely than whites to be depressed. 4% to 3.1%. Now, now that, that bothers me because it's less of us than it is of them. But more of us are stressed out than they are. I'm going to help somebody before I'm through. Do you realize that there are more distressed people in America than there are who are affected with HIV. Now, 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 you may have a family member who suffers from some form of depression or anxiety. Next week, I'm going, I'm going to be transparent and I'm going to share with you my bouts of depression. And uh, now don't y'all get too quiet on me. Uh, ain't nobody locked me up yet. <laughs> Sister Crusoe ain't called for the people to... Yet, she ain't called nobody yet. But, but you probably have someone in your family, or you know someone 
there may be someone in this building you might be sitting next to uh, that 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 stressed out, about to be stressed out, anxious, can't sleep at night, or just downright depressed. There's a difference between depression and anxiety. But anxiety, I believe, leads to depression. So I'm going to give you just an overview of depression, anxiety, and some, some, some manic. Uh, and, and you said, Perkins, is that Bible? Well, there was a wild man up in the caves in Mark 4, Mark 5. Uh, Mark 5, and, and they had to lock him down with chains and feathers. He had some emotional disturbances going on. He had some demons, and, and, and oftentimes Jesus would, would uh, they brought a boy, a father brought a boy to Jesus' disciples, and they could not cure him. He would throw himself in the fire, throw himself in the water. He had something on the inside. Nobody has the power today to exercise devils and demons out of people. But we've got to deal with this, 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 this thing of depression, stress, and anxiety. Now, here's the difference between depression and anxiety. A person who is depressed rather than anxiety generally does not show the same fear and uncertainty that people do who have anxiety disorders. Depressed people are not so preoccupied with worrying about what might happen in the future. Depressed people already know what will happen, and they believe that what's going to happen is bad. The same bad stuff that's happening to them right now. Here are some symptoms of depression, feeling sad or hopeless. Lack of interest, lack of enjoyment in activities that used to be fun and interesting. Sometimes depressed people, the symptoms are physical aches and pain without any physical cause. They call that psychosomatic. There ain't nothing really wrong with you, but you think something's wrong, and if you think it long enough, you're going to make it be wrong. Have you ever gone to the doctor and the doctor can't find nothing wrong with you? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm going to help a few people I see. Lack of energy can be brought on by depression. Sometimes difficulty concentrating or remembering. And sometimes even depressed people have difficulty making decisions. Sometimes the symptoms of depression is shown in weight loss or weight gain or changes in appetite or unwelcome changes in sleep patterns. Depressed people sometimes have thoughts of death or suicide. And they are often irritable. And, and sometimes I, I have to watch myself. I can be irritable and when I'm irritable it's because I'm depressed. Am I the only one that's going to be honest? And, 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 and I'm not saying that for you to use that against me. I'm saying that for us to be honest with ourselves. Depression can, 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 can come on as a sudden problem or a severe problem. And it can be long term or it can be less severe. And I'm going to spend more time next week talking about depression. They used to diagnose people as being manic, manic depression. But now they use the term bipolar disorder. But there are some high moods that people have and there are some low moods that people have. When they're in this high period, they, uh, their, their thoughts race. They don't need a lot of sleep and they have a lot of energy, but they make poor judgments. They, they can be overly enthusiastic and optimistic. Rapid talking, ideas to them are powerful and all-knowing. They think they know everything. And they make impulsive actions and they cause trouble for others. 
in a low depressed mood, a person experienced the symptoms of depression. This is the bipolar manic situation. What I'm really trying to say is we got to get a handle on this. And we have to deal with this from a biblical perspective. But when we talk about anxiety disorders, which is somewhat different from depression, somewhat different from bipolar, uh, anxiety disorders are characterized by doubt and vulnerability about future events. The difference between depression and anxiety is depression you're dealing with right now. Poor me. Poor me. Life ain't good right now. I don't like what I'm going through right now. So when you think about the right now, you end up being depressed. But when we talk about anxiety disorders, when we talk about worry, we're talking about something that ain't happened yet. It may not even happen. Are y'all going to help me with this? You're worried about something that you think might happen, but it has not yet happened. Anxious people focus on future prospects. The fear that the future will be bad. Anxiety disorders are characterized by a variety of symptoms, anxious thoughts, unexplained physical sensations, and self-protective behavior. So when I talk about, when the Bible says be anxious for nothing, be careful for nothing. When the proverb writer says that anxiety is heaviness of heart, and in Proverbs 12, what Solomon is really trying to say is being anxious or being worried causes one to stoop. It causes one to look down. Now, I, I, I've said this all along. Children of God ought to be looking up. And we ought to remember who we are and who we belong to. And we ought to remember what our calling is. And we ought to, and I'm going to say, if, if, you, if you are a human being, you're going to be concerned about things. You have to make plans about your future. But if we're going to make it to heaven, we have to do what Paul says, be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. Am I going to get some help here? Now, 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 now watch this. Paul is writing to a church from a Roman jail cell. Here's a man who is in prison for preaching the gospel. Yeah, yeah. But if you read through the book of Philippians, Paul says several times, rejoice. Uh-huh. What Paul is saying is, if I in jail can rejoice, you who are free ought to rejoice. Yeah. One thing I've learned is your situation may be bad, but someone else is worse than yours. Y- y'all ain't going to help me with this. I, 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 when we lived in Virginia, I worked for a little, little bit in social services, and I've told you this story before, but I remember I was the intake person. Folk would call, and I would listen to what their problem is, and I would direct them to the right service. So it might be a food stamp issue. It might be a Medicaid issue. Uh, uh, it might be uh, aid for dependent children issue. Uh, it, it, whatever, whatever it was, they had to come to me first. Are y'all with me? And I had to make the determination where this person would come. And I remember we, we were going through a rough spot. I think uh, Corey, we sent him off the, the Southwestern, and that's why I was doing this part-time job, and we, and we, we were having a little rough spot and, and, and uh, as a family, financially, and I thought, the, uh, uh, you, know, you know, just four of us, and, and, and we had a rough spot. And then the Lord had to teach me a lesson because somebody called or came into the office, they had just moved to the area, and they had 12 kids. Didn't have a place to live, didn't have any food. 
And I had to make the referral, the assessment, and then the referral to, to which branch of service. But what hit me is, four of us, we have food. Here's a family with 12 that move in that don't have food. My situation is bad, but somebody else has a worse situation. And what we have to learn as children of God is, don't create a pity party for yourself. Realize that if your situation is bad, someone else has a more worse situation. So Paul, from a Roman prick jail cell, writes to a church that he established. Acts the 16th chapter, you remember, Paul received that Macedonian call, and in a vision he saw a man saying, come over and help us. Paul went over. Paul and Silas went to Philippi, and they met a woman by the name of Lydia. Y'all remember that story? And they baptized Lydia in her household, and that's how the church at Philippi was established. Then later, a woman was following Paul, and she she was being prostituted by some men. She had a spirit of divination in her, and she was following Paul, and Paul got tired of that and exercised that devil out of her, and her master had Paul and Silas thrown in jail. That's where we get the story of the Philippian jailer asking the question, what must I do to be saved? So years later now, Paul is writing to this church that he loved, this church that he established, and he's in jail uh, himself. But the church of Philippi by this time is a fully organized church. They have bishops. They have deacons in that church. And he's sending Timothy to that church. Here's a church with a preacher. Here's a church with elders. Here's a church with deacons. But they still have some problems. And he's telling this church, uh, don't worry, uh, be careful for nothing. Now, I'm saying this, as much as we want leadership and as much as we're going to uh, do our best to get leadership, don't think leadership is a panacea. As long as folk is folk, we're going to have problems. Can, can I talk to y'all? As long as y'all keep being y'all, we're going to have problems. Amen, somebody. And that doesn't mean that we don't try to get to where uh, the Lord wants us to be. But here's the church. And Philippi wasn't a bad church. It was not a bad church. It wasn't a church like Corinth where you had folk doing everything under the sun. But Philippi had some everyday problems. And their everyday problems were leading to some spiritual problems. In Philippians 1, verse 18 and 19, the church was going through a severe persecution. In Philippians 1, 27, they had some disturbances in the church where, where there was some quarreling going on among the members. That not everybody was unified. There were two sisters in the church, Eutychus and Syntyche, who had to be reminded, y'all need to be of the same mind in the body of Christ. They, they had some false teachers that came to the church at Philippi. And that's why Paul said in Philippians 3, beware of dogs. He called these false teachers dogs. Are y'all with me here? And he ain't saying it like, that's my dog, that's my buddy. He's saying, no, you need to be aware of these men that will infiltrate the church and destroy the unity and destroy the doctrine. Even though they were a fully organized church, they still had some problems. But Paul is saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. In other words, the way we carry ourselves is important. Folk are looking at us. But Dorsey made a good point last Sunday or a couple weeks ago when he talked about in, in Bible class how, how people in the neighborhood, they're watching us. And they've been watching us for the last year or so. Next, next month, it, it'll be a year that the Lord has blessed us to be in this building. And when we were moving in and doing things, folk from the neighborhood was driving up in the parking lot, having conversations with me, wanting to know who we are. And, and they knew who was here before us. Now they said another group is coming in. And you know what some of them are thinking? Is this new group going to die out like the old group? 
And somebody asked, but Christian, why are you having stuff? Why are you having stuff? Folk ain't coming. You need to understand why we have why we have different things because we're trying to let our moderation be known to all men. We want this neighborhood to know this is a, a, a living church, an alive church. It's not a dead church. It's not just a once a week church. It's a church filled with folk who want their, the neighborhood to know that Jesus Christ is alive and he wants to save your soul. Yeah, y'all, y'all ain't feeling me here. You see, the reason we have activity is not just for you, but the reason we have activity is so this world that we believe the church of Christ is right. You don't have to get up and preach like I do, but you can show up. Say you, you, you may not sing like Blake uh, Lee's song, but you can show up. And by showing up, you let your moderation be known, be made known to all men. And, and then he says, look, Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious. Are y'all with me? This word anxious or be careful for nothing in King James and other versions, anxiety, means to be worried or to think about, have apprehension about possible danger or misfortune. It it, it means to look ahead and then to be overly concerned about what is about to happen. Now, I I, want to share with you, we can think about things, we can make plans, but let's not get all stressed out about something that has not happened. Y'all ain't hearing me. But but see, in, in the first century, they knew that the Lord could come at any time, just like now. Jesus could come any time. And they were worried about some things, and and that's why he said the Lord is at hand, but be careful for nothing. Now, what makes folk anxious? What what makes us anxious? Well, sometimes when I don't have enough food on my table, I might get anxious. When I can't pay my light bill, I might get anxious. If I cannot provide for my family, I may get anxious. Or or if I'm persecuted for for being a Christian, if I'm ridiculed or abused or if I'm threatened, if folk are talking about me behind my back, it can create some anxiety. Are y'all with me? Well, one thing I've learned, I've been doing this thing for 30, almost 40 years now. One thing I've learned is you cannot stop folk from talking about you. One thing I've tried to do is let the folk talk. I just want whatever you say, if it's negative, not to be true. Y'all ain't hearing me here. I, 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 I tell a story. Y'all, y'all know the story. I, I bought this suit uh, after a meeting. I thought I was sharp. I came back and wore it. And, and a sister, I got to church early and she was speaking to communion. She said she didn't like the suit. She didn't like my suit. And I, I didn't want to pay her no attention. And then she just kept kept messing with me, talking about she didn't like my suit. And I just had to fix her. I said, look, uh, you ain't my wife and you didn't buy it. So I ain't wearing this suit for you. Y'all ain't hearing me. Ain't no need of me getting stressed out because she didn't like my suit. I'm not wearing this suit to make for her. My fact, my fact, I remember that Sunday. Before I left, I asked my wife, how do I look? Now, she is saying, mm, I don't like that suit. I would have changed the suit. I ain't getting no help. <laughs> so, so, so they act like they ain't got no influence over their hood. Now, 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 now can, can we talk here? Look, look, now I know we, everybody knows some psychology, but the real deal is you got some influence with your husband. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And ain't nothing wrong with you having influence as long as you use the right influence. And use it the right way. So don't don't be saying broken. Don't be messing up my little scheme. Don't mess up. I, I got it. You know, I know how to get him to do what I want to do. Well, get him to do the right thing. So <laughs> excuse I was teasing just the other day. I, 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 said, I told her, I said, you know you got the power. You got the power. You run stuff. She said, yeah, right. I said, <laughs> I said, see how you using it over there? <laughs> I don't put her on blast. I'm in trouble. I'm going to talk like this when she ain't here. <laughs> but how do you handle anxiety? Uh, uh, you know, when you're surrounded by 
by, by, by these, these anxious moments. Where Paul tells us how to handle it in verse number 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything. Watch this. By prayer, that's one. Supplication is two. With thanksgiving, that's three. Let your request, that's four, be made known unto God. Paul, Paul said, I'm really trying to help y'all this morning. Now, now, there are moments that I'm anxious. I have moments when I am depressed. But I think about this. If it wasn't for the church, I would be worse than what I am now. I, I keep trying to help folks. Come back to evening service. Come back to midweek Bible class. And y'all ain't got it yet. And then you're stressed out on your job. Well, what do you expect from folk in the world? It's not their job to build you up. Their job is to tear you down. Y'all ain't hearing me. Now, I mean, do, do, do you really think that folk that don't know the Lord, that folk that cuss and drink and commit adultery and gamble, that they're going to look at you and treat you special just because you're a child of God? They are doing what they're supposed to do. Y'all ain't hearing me. But there ought to be a place where I don't have to deal with no cussing. Don't have to deal with folks drinking and gambling and lying and, 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 and trying to be immoral. Y'all not hearing me. So what you have to realize is you have to... You, I, I'm glad Blake and I were on the same way. He didn't know what I was going to preach. I didn't know what he was going to sing. But he's singing this song, uh, This World is Not My Home. Man, this world ain't your home. Ain't no need of you expecting folk in your neighborhood and on your job to be treating you right. You are a child of God. Amen. Brother Thomas saying, hallelujah, God, I mind thinking about heavenly things. I didn't tell him what I was going to preach, but what we need to realize, the reason we ought to be in church more than we in church is to keep us from having these anxiety attacks. See, maybe, maybe y'all get it if, if you realize that you will benefit and you're not doing it for me, you're not doing it for the church, but, but, but you can handle your anxiety, you can handle your stress, you can handle your frustration. Look, the world is going to be the world. It, they are children of the devil, and don't go to your job, don't go to your neighborhood, don't go to no group meeting thinking that they're going to be like you are. They don't know Jesus. They gonna do what they do. That's why. Remember, Brother Dean, uh, last week I said something about I, 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 uh, uh, when I was in college, I wanted to uh, start out being a political science major, and I got out of political science. I'm not trying to tell anybody else to do that. And Brother Dean said, "Well, he liked political science." I said, well, "Brother Dean, that's just not my makeup. I, I'm not like that. I, I, I don't. I'm not good at the science of politics. I, I, I'm just more." Let's just be straight with one another. You tell me what's on your mind, I'll tell you what's on my mind. Let's go about this the right. I'm not about scheming and, and, and plotting and setting up trap. I'm not but that's the world. That's the way they think. And that's the way they operate. So in order to make it six days a week, we gotta find time out of our busy schedule to devote some attention to the Lord. That's why morning and evening worship and midweek Bible class is helpful because it helps you deal with your stress. You come here and sing some song. My God is awesome. He can move the mountain. Now, I can sing that in my car. I can sing it at home in the shower. I can sing it in my bedroom, but I'm singing solo all by myself. Y'all ain't hearing me? So, so what I'm really trying to say is the way you handle your stress is right here in the text. Four words for prayer are used. First, he's talking about a general prayer which refers to special times of prayer that we share in devotion and worship. We ought to have set times for prayer. Times that we especially set aside 
for devotion and worship. That's why I'm saying, look, just don't make Sunday morning your priority. Make the whole day your priority. You know, make a whole day. Then he says, he uses this word, uh, supplication. Supplication. A supplication is a prayer that focuses on special needs. Sometimes we have a deep, intense need. And we go before God and supplicate. That is, we pour out our soul to God. Are y'all with me? There are times when you got to talk to God like he's your best friend. There are times that nobody knows like God what you're going through. And there are times when you got to just get alone and get by yourself. And you and the Lord just have some conversation. And you tell God about that boss. You tell God about that co-worker. You tell God about that family member. You tell God about your neighbor. You tell God about whoever is messing up with your stress. And you talk to God. You're not trying to be pretty. Say amen now. I remember, Corbin, I remember when I was in school. I remember, man, I, and I, I, I remember we had this, we had this exam, man. Um, it was in properties. It was in property. Man, properties whooped me. Couldn't sleep at night trying to prepare for property. And there was a guy from Chicago named Norman. He was an older guy. And he, he was a Muslim, had this Muslim hat on. I remember, I, 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 I remember, I remember me and Norman finished our exam at the same time. He was on one side of the room, I'm on the other side of the room. And we both looked at each other. And the way we looked at each other, we knew it whooped us. <laughs> if I wasn't in church, I'd say something else. But it whooped us. It just whooped us. And man, there was some, sometimes when you're so overwhelmed with life that all you can do is just get on your knees and talk to God. It, it, it's, like, it's like he's your parent and you're a child. And you're coming to him pouring out your heart. Daddy, life is hard. Daddy, I'm trying my best. Father, nobody understands. Daddy, make a way out of no way. I need you right now. And don't try to be pretty and cute. Just talk to God from your heart. You're pleading and you're begging. You're asking him, comfort me, deliver me, rescue me, get me out of this mess. Make a way out of no way. You, you got to do some supplication. And then he says, with thanksgiving. I, I, I want to help somebody this morning. And, and what I really want to help you with is understand is our prayers should be more than just asking God for that. There are times when you just want to pray prayers of thanksgiving. You think life is not good for you right now. But man, it's a blessing to have a house. I think for the Lord pray about uh, folk who are homeless. It bothers me to think that that that, that I could be homeless. Man, it, it tears me up to think that I might not have a place for my family. And I remember, I'm gonna share more with you next week, but I'm gonna share a little bit. When I grew up, when I grew up, and you you might understand. Why I went through my depression, but we, we lived with my grandmother and grandfather. And I don't know what was going on with my grandfather, but we lived in that house. And we were, my sister and I, we were ashamed to tell folks where we lived. Because for some reason, my granddaddy never painted the house. Stuff would fall down inside the house. I, I, mean, I mean, just literally fall. That's why, you know, I'm, look, I'm looking around here. We got stuff around here that ain't been repaired. Come on, y'all. You know, and, and, and I don't want to grow up like that. You know, I, I, I remember when, when Brother, Brother McGuire, we didn't have an outhouse, but our bathroom was connected to the back porch. And there was no heat or air in the, in the bathroom in the back porch, so it was like an outhouse. Y'all ain't hearing me. 
That means it was cold outside. It was cold in there. Say amen, somebody. Now, some of y'all ain't been there. Don't know what I'm talking about. So I can thank God for where I live. And they got to apologize for wanting a good house. Say amen, somebody. I remember, I, I, I think, yeah, you know, we come down, we come down, you know, we be walking home from school, and, and you know, uh, we folks didn't know where we live, so when it get close, when it get close for to, to, to my house, I start slowing up. <laughs> and, and let them go on. Are y'all hearing me? So sometimes, it's just good to just thank God for what you have. Say amen now. Thank God. So sometimes, you know, just thank God for good children. Maybe they didn't go to Harvard. They may not have gone to Yale, but they good children. They know how to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. They may not make the newspaper, but they good children. Say yes, somebody. You know, just, just, just count too many blessings. And we sit around here, some of us, some of us, got a mate, and then act like we don't want the mate we got. <laughs> and then some folks out there wish they had somebody. <laughs> Say amen now. <laughs> he may not look like this, Sam. Alright, what's that girl that won the Academy on? Yeah, I know, he's a smart guy, he's a smart guy. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, he may not look like this there, but you may not look like Holly Bear. <laughs> but Brownie, he's smart, he knows the tricks. He's just right here, right here, right here. He's going to make you look like a woman. I'm sorry, Brownie, you can sit down like that. He's going to make you look like a woman. But Brownie, I got to go home tonight. <laughs> You got a job. Man, be thankful for the job. You know, I've lost jobs. I've lost jobs. And, uh, you know, have family lost a job. But I, I, I've never been so proud that I couldn't humble myself and take another job. I remember, and I had my told, I, I remember um, when I was in, 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 in the school, at school, and uh, I lost a job on Friday. And you know how folks do, they, they don't, they just call you in office. So you just laugh. <laughs> and we got in one car, and my wife had dropped me off. And, uh, and then she went on to work or whatever. I'm so ashamed, I couldn't call and tell her, <laughs> come pick me up and just lost the job. <laughs> I just had too much, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 so, so, so I walked home, and I'm thinking, how am I going to tell them? How am I going to tell them? How am I going to tell them? I think I have a job, you know? And uh, so I walked home, and I don't remember how I told them, but that was Friday. But by next Tuesday, I had this other job. <laughs> I had this other job. And, and I, was, I was a meter reader. So the West Texas Utility Company. And, 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 you know, here I am working on my master's degree. Got a master's degree. You know, got a family, and, 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 and I'm, 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 I'm jumping over fences, running from dogs. I don't even know. Y'all ain't hear me? I was just thankful to have a job. I remember. We had to move from one place to another, and um, and I remember because you know couldn't afford for we were staying, so we got to move. And so I took court, and we went we went look at this house. We went to look at this house. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, brother, brother, I'm just thinking about this is all I can afford. Yeah. <laughs> I went to look at this house. I took court and said, court is dead. I knew right there that that wasn't going to 
So if he feel like that, I don't want his mom to see this happen. I know he did that, 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 that. But, 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 but my point is, be thankful. Just be thankful for what you have. Instead of being all stressed out about what you don't have. Are y'all feeling me now? And then he closes it by saying, let your requests, let your requests be made known unto God. Blake, there's some, some things you just gotta ask God for. You, you got to, it's gotta come out your mouth. You, you got to, you, you got to ask. If, if you want, if you want to change in your life, you got to ask him for it. You, you got to be specific. You got to put it in the word. You got to ask the Lord. Lord, change this. Lord, give me a better job. Give me a better house. Lord, make things better. You got to be specific. Don't, don't, don't be so, so, so carefree about it. Tell the Lord what it is you need. We don't have to be stressed out. Uh, you know, and again, I want to say sometimes there's chemical imbalances. If there's a chemical imbalance, that has to be dealt with medication. But I also want to say, even with medication, everybody needs Jesus. And I, I'm trying to help you. You know, we end up trying to do things on our own, fix stuff on our own, and we end up making it worse. We don't, we, when we don't realize Making the Lord your first priority is the best thing that you can do. As I go, then Jesus said, look, don't, don't be worried about uh, what you're going to eat, and drink, or what you're going to wear. Then he said, Matthew 6, he said, take no thought for your life. And then he said, look, look at the sparrows. They don't worry, but always about what they go eat. And a bird never goes hungry. Look at the lilies of the field. And how they are raised. And he, and he even said, even Solomon wasn't clothed like the lilies of the field. Y'all not here, man. You don't need me worrying myself out. Working overtime, double time, triple time, and I'm still tired, still can't make ends meet. Turn it over to Jesus. He'll take care of it. And if some of these folks are giving you some problems, you, you better learn how to call that name up in some prayer. Amen. Amen. That, 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 that's what I meant by request. Like, you, 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 you put a name in that prayer. Amen. You know, name that person. Amen. 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 You call them, you name them to God. Amen. Are y'all with me here? So, so that, this, this is part one, part one, part two. Part two is going to be better than part one. I'm just, I'm just kind of giving it over to you, you know. But anxiety has more to do with concern about the future. Now, let me tell you, I don't know what the future holds. But I know who holds the future. Ain't that good news? And as long as you know who holds the future, it's going to be all right. Say amen, somebody. As I, as I try to close for the fourth time, <laughs> you remember when the Hebrew wars were commanded to bow down when they heard the sound of the music? And if they did bow down, they would be thrown into the fire and earth. You remember what they told the king? It's an old king. We're not careful to answer you this that. We don't even need to think about this. We will not bow down. Because my God is able to deliver me. And then they said, even if he don't deliver me, we will not bow down. It over, y'all ain't stressing me out. And you see how God fixed that thing over in Daniel 3? That the men, are y'all with me? This is true, those little, little men that with the soul, the boys in the first, they got burned up. Y'all ain't hearing me. That's what happens when you put some names on some stuff. And, and the folks that land some traps for you, they fall into the trap. 
So even before they can throw a man in the furnace, they got burnt by the fire. That's how hot it was. But then the team looked down there, oh, and what happened? Y'all know the story? So for a tank out of the fire and furnace, didn't even smell like smoke. Y'all ain't here, man. You can overcome stress, anxiety, and depression. As long as you keep your eyes on him who holds the future in his hand. I, I won't say this to you, Stan. You know, we've had our periods of uncertainty. We did not know what was going to happen. But we knew him who could make it happen. And as long as we keep our eyes on him, ain't no telling what he's been to do. Trying to help them now. If I, if I just get, if I get five more people that ain't been coming back to come back tonight, we be on the board. Amen. If I just get five more people to buy into that, but tomorrow you got to deal with some stress. Rest of the week you got to deal with some stress, but you can be stressless if you start the week off right. Now there may be something here this morning. Man, I feel like preaching. <laughs> Who's not a member of the Lord's church? Will you come to Jesus this morning by putting your faith in Him, believing that He is the Son of God, that He hung on the cross, died, He bled before He died, He suffered before He died, but then He died, and God raised Him from the grave the third day. Um, if you believe that, then you can repent of your sins. You can repent. Uh, past sin, to then make the confession that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And they will baptize you in the water for the remission of your past sin. If you need to be restored to this now, you need restoration, you want to confess sin, you can come forward and make this statement to the church. If you just need prayer, we want you to come forward and we, we're going to have a prayer circle for you. But we want you to realize that you can overcome stress. Anxiety and depression. Man, I wish they had more time. The devil wants you stressed out. He wants you stressed out. I, I remember as I closed again, man, I got so many clothes. Y'all stand on your feet for that. Because I can be clothing things. But, but I remember holding my job. Man, the folk would come in and we would medicate them. You know, there's certain medications that would just make some people like zombies. Yeah, yeah. Like zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you come now. We in the invitation. You need to come. You come now. I remember we would put people on medication, uh, and certain medications would just space people out. It would, it, it would just space them out. They just be spaced out. They just wasn't good for nothing, you know. Uh, and I can't remember all the medications. Cogent was one of them, and some some that medication would just just space them out. They wasn't good for anything. Yeah. And I'm what I'm really trying to say is the devil. Wants you spaced out. He wants you fearful, frustrated, so that you cannot be any good for the master. That, that's what the devil wants. But we can overcome it. That's why that, that, that text in Proverbs 12 is a powerful text. See, don't ever underestimate what a good word can do for someone. A good word. Man, sometimes I'm having a bad day, you know, I'm having a bad day, and, and a sister or brother will say something good and just lift my spirit. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And you, know, you don't know what I went through last night, you don't know what I'm going through, and, and then this brother over here, he sang a song, and, and my mind just looks turning around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, so we got to be encouraging to one another yeah. so that we don't be stressed out. And spaced out, and just just worry all the time. And then we worry all the folks. If, 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 if you worry, if you want to party and invite people to your pity party, and everybody, no oh, man, I don't want to come to church and be worried. I want to be singing and be happy. I want, I want some hope on Sunday. So how to make it through the rest of the week? So if you need prayer, if you need prayer, if you want to uh, 
be restored. You come, and as we say, the song of encouragement. Will you come? Oh, to Jesus.